you know, know the cast, casting couch, right? Okay, it does exist. So let's not fool ourselves with, that it doesn't. It exists now across genders. So you've got women, women, you've got men, men, you've got men, women, you've got all kinds of permutation and combination. You've got orgies, you've got uh, sexual threesomes, you've got all kinds of things going on. Mixing drinks, uh, uh, setting up someone, uh, video recording someone in intimate acts. All these things happen. Yeah, yeah. Wife swapping, husband swapping, uh, different partners at different nights, unbelievable use of um, substances. You've got alcohol, you've got MDMA, you've got cocaine, you've got weed. In fact, I think weed is now like a cigarette. Everybody's. They have to forget about the fact that they have to be exclusive to their partners. They have to do sexual favors. They have to be dishonest. The world of celebrities is so, sorry for the word, fake. Bollywood can be a very matlabi place. There is a lot of groupism. I think many marriages in Bollywood are just pretenses. A nose job gone horribly, horribly wrong. Instead of being failures and not being given movies, they'd rather end their lives. And how messed up... And I do believe that's exactly what happened to Shushan said. That he couldn't cope up. I think so. What do they come to you? Like, when do they come to you? And what are the mass, like major problems like Bollywood celebrities come to you with? So basically, I mean, even though they may be celebrities in terms of, you know, having risen the ranks and, you know, world famous or India famous, etc. They come with the same human problems that you and I have. They're no different. They're absolutely no different. They're as pained about breakups, about love relationships. They're as devastated when their movies don't do well. They're as concerned about the well-being of their children and how their children are growing. They're as concerned about, you know, the facets of that they grow older. So, mm. you know, whether they'll still be uh, looked upon as these young tinsel town, you know, people who would be wanted on the screen anymore. So the regular stuff that you and I worry about, maybe the only difference being that they may not be as concerned about uh, money or wealth because most of them have hopefully made enough. The world of celebrities is so, sorry for the word, fake mm. and so superficial that we are all the time trying to camouflage and put on this strong facade and constantly showcase that, you know, we are absolutely with it. We have no issues. But actually inside, their heart is as much of jelly as ours and they need as gentle handholding as any other client of mine would. And how easy it is for you to show them the real picture, like show them the mirror, ki bhai ye tumhari, you know, this is the reality, you know, get out. Because they are Very surrounded. easy. Oh. Very easy because you'll be surprised that they know that it's all lights, camera, action, but reality is quite different. That they would get a perspective which is not about, you know, just telling them what they want to hear, but telling them things which otherwise people may not tell them simply because they have so much at stake. For me, I have nothing at stake. You've chosen me. It's my responsibility to see that the person who comes to me is comfortable in and is getting real world solutions to real world problems. Because otherwise, the filmy uh, kind of group is all living in this nice little bubble. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> sometimes they find it very hard to cope with that bubble because when they step out, especially, you know, in marriages, in love relationships with their children, etc., they realize that it's not all hunky-dory and that, you know, what they showcase on the screen is not in actuality at all there. And in fact, that's why they reach out so that yeah. they get some kind of a reality check. And I'll be very honest, everyone who I've seen so far, and I'm sorry, I can't share any names because my credibility will be at stake. Uh, I have worked too hard for my reputation. And one of the reputation I have is that she will never talk to anyone about who comes to her. Some experiences that you remember were memorable, you know, and some which were like really like, oh God, like even you were like, what a tough cookie to crack. Yeah. So, I mean, I think my uh, most recent one was about uh, a very well-known person who's had a relationship breakup and she was completely devastated, completely. And uh, we called in her at that time partner as well and realized that, he was just lying through his teeth. In fact, he was manipulating. He was completely not honest. He was sorry, but making a fool of her. And it took a lot of sessions for me to help her see that because I think she was deluded in the idea that he would eventually marry her, which I knew as a professional 
that he was just taking her for a royal ride and he wouldn't. Uh, but it was really so upsetting for me to see that this was all orchestrated and planned by the person and his friends uh, to kind of string her along and, you know, make her all kinds of promises and then eventually dump her. So it's very sad sometimes when you see, you know, the kind of things that people do. And as I said, I will not only restrict it to celebrities. I think it happens everywhere. many humans, absolutely, many humans are not really honest, not really, of uh, you know, authentic in the relationships that they try to build. Sorry, but Bollywood can be a very matlabi place. We want to be with you because you will help us meet the right people, the production team, the directors, uh, introduce us to you know, the right kind of group, so to speak. And there's a lot of groupism. There is a lot of groupism and you can see cliques, okay, and how they hit the other and how they constantly bitch out the other. So it's just a, sorry, but very toxic place sometimes to be in. And then the sensitive people, as mm -hmm. you know, what happened in June two, three years ago, end up committing suicide and taking their own lives. So it's it's tragic because they do see, they do find, some of them find it very hard to cope. And then, you know, as a therapist, I'm so disturbed by mm. what I see because it's a projection of everything's great, but inside they're absolutely crumbling. So that was something which I think really touched me. I think really left me feeling like, hey, do you guys know that, you know, in the tinsel town of Bollywood that you step into, that your successes come with a severe price that and are you ready for the price are you emotionally uh, able to cope what is that price sacrifices? what is that price that you say the price could be uh, losing your identity losing your individuality uh, just sorry for the word again ass licking so that you get the work you know saying things which you actually don't mean okay mean things which you uh, may not want to actually say Okay, so there's so much of a compromise and an adjustment. And it's that that we want to really address because that is what leads to the vulnerability and the depression. And you've seen in the recent couple of years how many people have unfortunately ended their lives, how many have been on unnecessary, you know, like fat burners and what have you, and passed away. A story, I mean, an incident you can share where somebody was just completely messed up by the cliques and the whole gangism. And what did they yeah. like come to you? And wh what was that? An, an experience or a story? Yeah, just can... weeping, weeping and realizing that no matter what she did, she was never going to be allowed to be uh, the top star, even in an OTT platform. Forget about, uh, you know, Bollywood movies. That until she didn't adhere to what was being asked of her, Okay, which is that, uh, you know, no, the cast, casting couch, right? Okay, it does exist. So let's not fool ourselves that, that it doesn't. It exists now across genders. So you've got women, women, you've got men, men, you've got men, women, you've got all kinds of permutation and combination. You've got orgies, you've got uh, sexual threesomes, you've got all kinds of things going on. And uh, just because she refused, she would come for every audition, perform fabulously, and then at the end, say sorry. And it, it, it led to such a state that she began to, uh, you know, take um, antidepressants, um, uh, medication, began to kind of, uh, put on weight because these medications are not without their side effects. And then slowly withered away out of contention. It's a network game. Let me put it like that. The more network you are, the easier your chances, the less network you are. Then all these things come into play. But you know, you've obviously been seeing so much for the last 20 years but is there some is there any particular client who came in and completely like bowled you over ki bhai this is something that i've never seen this like completely like even you were in shock ki. i didn't know that there was such a groupism i wasn't aware of it i didn't know that there was such bitchiness i didn't know that there was such a kind of a, you know uh, only hanging on and then doing everything to sabotage somebody else's career and i use the word sabotage I use the word sabotage because there have been unbelievable things being done to derail someone only so that his or her preferred person gets the role. So so things like, you know, mixing drinks, uh, uh, setting up someone, uh, video recording someone in intimate acts, all these things happen. 
they'll run to the cardiologist because their heart rate has gone up, their blood pressure has gone up. And then the cardiologist and the uh, physician realizes that, hello, there's nothing wrong because you're too young to have this. And it's all a physiological manifestation of the anxiety you're experiencing. So go see a therapist instead. Any uh, celebrity who came to you was at the brink of like suicide and you kind of pulled them out. But what was that whole yeah, counseling session up. like? Or yeah, the... the yeah, the breakup where, as I said, when she realized that she had just been stringed along and taken for a royal ride, it came to a point that uh, she would message me, uh, I think it's worth dying, etc. So it required a lot of uh, gentleness, hand holding, a reassurance. I had to call in, you know, some family member to, uh, to, to be around so that, you know, the person didn't do something as radical and as drastic as this. But it's not uncommon for many of them, even today, to be, you know, to use... Uh, over-the-counter kind of whether it's a Benadryl or whether it's you know melatonin or any of these things on a regular basis because they just can't sleep because of the anxiety so the dominant emotion that many of these people in Tinseltown experience is anxiety a lot of affairs happening in Bollywood you know married men or women cheating on their wife cheating on their husbands what is that like it's uh, it's more common than you and I think and it's so rampant that I don't know whether the word loyalty and faithfulness uh, really means something to many of the people who are supposed to be exclusive to each other, whether in marriage or in a committed relationship. Okay. I guess also, I mean, let me be fair. I think sometimes, uh, you know, spending six, six, eight, eight months on sets, um, out, uh, outdoor outdoors. sets in terms of outstation and the intimate scenes, etc. It, it can be a very lonely feeling to be uh, without companionship. So by default, the actor and actress kind of get together and then something or the other kind of transpires. Of course, some of them are just able to leave it behind after the movie ends and stop it there. And some, in some cases, it just continues. And it doesn't happen only among the actors. It also happens in the production team and in the whole ecosystem that is Bollywood actor or actress the female the male thinking shadi karega mujh se, you know they will leave their spouse. very 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 and we say that if within the year a person doesn't commit okay he or she possibly never will so they build a fantasy and they're living in fantasy world pretty much 24 7 because what they're selling to us which we enjoy watching on in the screen is nothing but a fantasy right right so most in fact, I'm going to use this word. Many of my young uh, clients who have these romantic illusions and delusions, I blame on Karan Johar and his movies. What did he sell us in the 1990s? Okay, And many people have grown up on, sorry for the word, but that nonsense, believing that is love and that is how marriages happen and that's how romance happens. And they are all actually suffering because of the nonsense and the drivel that was repetitively shown. And you can't imagine how the young adult has suffered because of watching this. Tell me about the most, yeah. like, so like the most difficult celebrity you came across and what was that difficulty you faced? The inability to accept reality and break away from what was a very toxic and an abusive relationship. That's another thing, the, the, abuse, most... the abuse that happens in the industry. <coughs> Behind doors, men beating women, women taking it. And not only physical abuse, we've got emotional abuse, we've got gaslighting, we've got narcissism, we've got people actually um, uh, uh, making, manipulating and making other people believe that they are the problem. And actually, it is me who may be the problem, who is trying can to you, now completely you, brain, brainwash. Talking about their love lives, you know, like when they come to you with that, uh, with of yeah. course examples, any relationship where there was like really like fighting constantly or, you know, like... What, what what was that? I mean, any like... Most, most. Sex, sex is a very uh, big weapon that a lot of people in relationships use where they just withdraw. They just don't give you sex. The man just doesn't give you sex or the woman just doesn't give you sex. Both ways, okay? And that becomes a, a battlefield because they are Bollywood people, they're suffering in silence. The prevalence of orgies and like, you know, so much of like, uh, you know... Yeah, know, wife like... swapping, husband swapping, uh, different partners... At different nights, unbelievable use of um, substances, unbelievable use of substances, all kinds of substances. You've got alcohol, you've got MDMA, you've got cocaine, you've got weed. In fact, I think weed is now like a cigarette. Everybody's 
pretty much smoking up. It's a very, very common um, a form of recreation. What, what happens is we don't know when the recreation becomes a dependence. And that also is becoming a big concern because they're not able to cope, right? Yeah. So they'd rather down themselves with, you know, these kind of substances so that they don't experience what? The pain, the emotional distress. What is the percentage you would say of the, like everybody is doing it? Like mostly everybody is doing it, you'd say? Mostly, mostly. Yeah, mostly. Because it's a very difficult place to be. So any, uh, how did you, any one particular case study, like somebody who came to you with like completely a an addict, you know, and... Uh, you and know, have had to be sent to rehab because the simple therapy may not have helped. And obviously the families didn't want to take a chance. I know that there are people who've uh, kind of uh, uh, start, uh, started sessions, gotten better, but then all they need is one external trigger to flip them and they go back to square one. And then we have no option but to kind of rehab them. And, you know, put them in institutions, of course, foreign ones, more often than not, because they don't want to be uh, uh, seen here. Okay, because our rehabs are limited in terms of the high-end ones. Okay. So Hospitals you're saying not... very, very recent stars as well have gone to rehab. Like oh, yeah. the, the, the Abhike stars. Hai. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, Abhike stars. Hai. <laughs> because uh, 20 years ago, nobody saw therapy. Now it's becoming slightly more prevalent and accepted. Uh, among certain people who are slightly more involved but even among a certain set of people there'll be people who will as I repeat suffer in silence and never come and it is know, Abhike stars who have the worst I think of the lot the whole drug use of course you know which is which is crazy and they open up to you and tell you honestly like what is happening what is going on but yeah have... absolutely because even psychiatric drugs are being misused right and then they're just popping as and when they please so they are uh, violating the use of it. I know some people who are having shots of vodka before they get on the sets because they just want to be at ease. They're not able to perform in front of the camera with so many people watching. They become so self-conscious. So you've got people even using these medications to be able to work. It is not only about solving their problem. It's also about performance and productivity that they find that if they're not able to deliver as well as they should, Okay, they'll, they'll not be able to face themselves. So just to calm their nerves, to be able to give that shot, to be able to, you know, perform on stage, uh, you know, do all these IFA and whatever awards, etc. You would see them using uh, all kinds of substances, even during the day. So it's not only at night. I would just say that Bollywood is not for everyone. And one has to know oneself well enough and ask oneself that is one emotionally equipped to be in such a place? It's not a fun place. It's a very, very hard place. When, they have, when you have to send yeah. them to rehab, what is that like? Because they have film schedules to take care of. They have to like, you know, they're obviously bound by like dates and stuff. So yeah, tell, it tell costs, me, tell it, me about it costs how... the production house a lot of money. But uh, 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 usually, I mean, what do we do? Either you have, sorry, but a completely withered person not be able to perform or you're going to take a, a, a hit of some money and then have him or her resurrected to be back and finish what needs to be done. Because at the end of the day, can you see the burnout? Forget rehab. Can you see how people are collapsing and dying? You know, you mentioned about value system and cut takes a hit. What is, what is, what happens to the value system? Like if any, with example, is anybody who's come to you said, I was like this, I was like this. Lots. Yeah, lots. Because it becomes like, how does your color look like? It's it, today I'm I'm orange. So I'll be orange. Day after I'm green, I'll become green. Then I'll become brown. I I lose my identity and my sense of being because if I don't compromise, I'm going to not be looked at. So the entire there is no value system. There is no consistent value system. It changes according to the wind. And why does it change? Because of the need. So the neediness is so much to be you know, put in that role, to be given that one opportunity, to be, you know, uh, given that uh, one shot, to be in front of the camera that they say, like, forget it. What's my value system? You're not giving me anything. At least here, if I say, ha me ha, so at least I'll get that one possible opportunity, which otherwise I would never get. So in, in clear terms, what are the value system that, that breaks? But that they can, they have to like, like, they, they, they have to forget about the fact that they have to be exclusive to their partners. They have to do sexual favors. They have to be dishonest. They have to uh, 
be hypocrites. Uh, they cannot criticize. They cannot give honest feedback. They have to basically compromise in most facets of who they are as people and go along just simply to belong, to belong to that clique, to belong to the production house, to belong to that team. Otherwise, they're going to be discarded and kicked out. What level have you seen somebody fall to be a part of a clique? Every level. Uh, where they've lost their entire being. And then comes this dichotomy of who am I? And what am I even the same person that I was when I started? And then sometimes that identity crisis will lead to such a, a mental disturbance. And then you have a full-blown inability. And then these are the kind of people who usually end their lives. Because they can't take it anymore. They can't stand it. They can't stand themselves. They hate themselves. The best way of relief Instead of being failures and not being given movies, they'd rather end their lives. And how messed up... And I do believe that's exactly what happened to Shushan Singh. That he couldn't cope up. I think so. Because he was, from what I read, I think he was being repetitively sidelined. He was not a form of any clique or group. And I think it got to him beyond a point. And it would get to any sensitive person. So if you dial back and you look at all the people who possibly ended their life, there is no a condition called abetment to suicide. But you know, like you said about Sushant being sidelined, who are the people who are sidelining? Like, and, they, and do they realize what they're doing? They're, they're fully aware that they want to abet them to that place, right? That is the... Yeah, they, they are thick-skinned psychopaths uh, who are extremely... Uh, uh, they have that mean uh, bone in them. They, they get fun. They are sadists. There are conditions. I don't want to go uh, technical here, but there is a condition called the dark ride. It's a combination of a narcissist, a sociopath, and a sadist. And these are the people who are unfortunately in positions of power. In fact, because of their personality type, they've been able to get that power. And then they control, they dominate, and they have uh, you know, their cronies or their chumchas around them. And then people who are sensitive, are completely sidelined because of the personality type. As I repeat, Garima, a celebrity is a human being at the end of the day, mm -hmm. as subject to idiotic personality disturbances as any regular person. So I do not treat them differently. I don't get enamored. I don't get awestruck. You I have to talk people. I, I was just going to I ask can't. you, how, how, yeah, quick, how quickly were your, were you, was your starstruckness gone? You know, like how Very you, quickly. You, yeah, yeah. I will have some nerves if like say Am Amitabh Bachchan would walk into my office I would be different any Bollywood celebs who came to you having divorce issues or marriage issues and or like what led to that divorce or what leads to that divorce what is like the most common or any like case study you can share about that sure in fact I think many marriages in Bollywood are just pretenses uh, they just stay married because they have to and not because they want to and uh, they, they just as uh, just go along okay but uh, I think, the, as I said, the, the most important thing is the lack of attention, the constant anxiety that someone's going to be better, that I'm going to, you know, lose my person to another kind of more beautiful, more able, uh, younger person. So age is a big factor. We don't know how to uh, gra uh, gracefully go, grow old in Bollywood. We are all trying to remain in our 25s and in our 30s or whatever. Okay, because we want youth is being celebrated and sold in such an unfortunate manner. That's why you have plastic surgeons doing so well. And how many times have they come to you crying about like a plastic surgery gone wrong? Because so many times we see actresses' faces change and they don't look good, you know? And yeah, they probably yeah. know it themselves. So yeah. what has that conversation been like? A nose job gone horribly, horribly wrong to the extent that I uh, unfortunately this person had to take the plastic surgeon to uh, the, to the cleaners in terms of uh, there were lawsuits and all of that. So it's uh, it's common. But I think now what is happening is that uh, uh, many of them are also realizing that uh, if they are not convinced with the skill of the surgeon, they are deferring it or doing it uh, abroad or you know uh, taking all their chances, not necessarily with the local doctors who are available for them. But if they, they have, they hide. They don't want to come out. I know that someone went for some kind of a skin treatment, um, some skin peeling or something. Okay. And unfortunately, it didn't react very well. Her skin got burned. She did not come out of her house for six months. That is the trauma. So the trauma of not looking nice 
is to another level in in this set of people because they're only being celebrated for their looks right and the anxiety my god you feel like god is it worth all of this what they suffer and they suffer it is not something that is easy so you and me may say wow she's karina kapoor and she's madhuri dikshit and she's whoever we don't know the price they paid they paid a humongous price which once you sit on that chair you understand that it's it's a very painful experience for many of them it's not as joyous as it's made out to be or not as glamorous as we think it is it's full of sacrifice full of uh, uh, you know deprivation full of giving up life and you also mentioned about the obsession with fat burners and oh, things like oh yes that. how are people collapsing on the treadmills and on the uh, uh, you know workout thing first of all i mean these are unhealthy things to take but then i guess because you're selling your body you have to look a particular way and then you overdo it and then before you know it your heart gives up they are having ramifications i had someone who was taking these uh, what is it called these protein shakes mm. whose kidney is packed up and had to be in the icu because an overdose of protein affects your kidneys now what we don't realize is all this at what cost and what about bulimia how prevalent is that in bollywood all the eating disorders all the eating disorders huh? so it's very nice to say that you know don't do this so you got on one hand starvation which is equally damaging for mental health in fact i have had people who've come uh, bollywood people who have gone on this no carb diet and have literally lost their mind you know varka also a lot of uh, young actresses now thankfully are getting married you know and yeah. uh, finding partners yeah. then the yeah. pressures of they get married they have a child and then the pressures to lose weight after having yeah. that child what is their yeah. mental health there like ha- have these young mothers you know how do you sort of counsel them what is what do they go through with the weight gain and the weight that they've put on so that's why surrogacy is on such an upswing because many people don't want to carry the babies themselves because they don't want to lose their figure how lonely is it at the top for these top celebrities kya hota hai inke sath they have seen the fame how obsessed are they with fans also like if the fans if the fans stop loving them what will happen to them and how obsessed are they some are very balanced and as i say don't take themselves so seriously and i able to keep that uh, identity away because they don't only judge themselves as actors okay so some are quite nice the others are constantly on edge and that's why then the use of substance to be able to cope okay or oh, so only 500 or 5000 people like my like uh, my, my insta video or reel rather than you know 5 lakh people example it causes them immense anguish so if you ask me bollywood is a sure shot method to anxiety tell me when all this it last two years we've seen a lot of this information coming out the dark side of bollywood the drugs the you know all of that coming out did they come to you with worry ki bhai you know now it's like it, this is all coming out in the open we just might be anis might come out or like so that sort of anxiety that period that last two three years you must have seen uh, a yeah, lot more I, I, sure i think now there are divisive camps right one trying to pull the other down and everyone's worried that their skeletons are going to tumble out and they, therefore they uh, therefore the trust in that uh, segment of society is rather low they i don't think that they trust each other to keep their secrets i don't think that they trust each other that somebody is not going to pull the rug under their uh, under their feet i don't think that they trust each other that someone will have their back it's a very paranoid existence very paranoid suspicious paranoid and as i said you have to be of a different metal uh, to be able to cope over the long haul so bollywood you say also is a very mean place very mean and toxic very very mean very jealous very envious unable to see the success of another not happy for other people kind of a place and what is like the most superficial things that they have kind of come to you with that you feel like oh you know i have a love handle here oh see my wrinkle here oh see you know this one never said hi to me oh i went to i was not invited to that party i said really but that's the level of insecurity this party thing is a very big thing not being invited to very a party big, not being invited to a party not being on that a list not being called for the premiere of whatever okay not being included so exclusion in 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 bollywood is a huge thing and exclusion leads to some people's inability to cope 
and actually my heart goes out to them now you know even more you know like yeah. it's it's yeah. so tough it's so tough it's so tough i can't tell you and as i say we all sit and feel very glamorous and all they've paid a huge price to be where they are and they know it some of us know it some of us mm-hmm. uh, you know feel a little empathetic but they're so badly judged they're judged by the fridays their their movies release they just put under the scanner all the time and the spotlight is so uh, like bright oh. on them yeah that uh, we have to be a little more sensitive we have to be much more uh, understanding much more considerate much more compassionate they are as human as us and i think they go through the same things that we go through so i think i if one message i would like to give for people who view you and your channel and you know who are constantly so critical of them i think just step back and just give them some leeway to just be themselves true true yeah and also i think for all of all the ones who want to join the industry this is a great uh, sort of toolkit for them to watch this and learn and understand what they're going what they're getting into yes and equip so and i'm not saying don't get into it but yeah. equip yourself before you jump thank you so much barkha for your time and i really appreciate it we'll do a, we'll do a, we'll do a round two we'll pick up topics and like go more deep dive into them you know sure sure, sure. thank Thanks you so a lot. much take, take care. care all the Bye-bye. best have a good day yeah thank you, you take care